I'm angry. Please go ahead and be as angry as you like. Um, Dan, <clears throat> it's far above my pay grade to go and analyze what happens in a big city. Strange, very strange. And how do you know that there's prejudgment? Well, I don't know much. <laughs> <laughs> yes. With children allegedly stalked one of the victims, that's false. There's a lot of information in that affidavit that is just flat and not true. I'm angry. Please go ahead and be as angry as you like. We have found that our commenters have an awful lot to say to us. Most of it good, not always, but mostly what they like to comment about is this Coburger Idaho 4 case. So today we pulled some of your comments and we're going to see what you guys have to say. A lot of the times it feels like the more we look into the Coburger case, the more questions we come up with. And you guys have a lot of those questions too. I'm Lainey Law. And I'm attorney Andrew Myers. Today we're going to be taking a look to see what you guys have said in the past. So today we're actually going to be looking at comments from a video that Andrew did with his buddy Tommy, which I have not had the opportunity, unfortunately, to work on a video with Tommy, but I'm hoping in the future we will be able to. That being said, let's start off with our first comment, which I thought was interesting from Juniper Rob. So, when does a shoe print become latent? How could the out one outside of Dylan's door be latent? Good question. By the way, you were invited to join Tommy and me, but you were busy that day. I mean, we wanted you. Tommy asked questions. Of, Where is Lainey? Where is Lainey? We love uh, seeing her. Whether they love seeing me or not is another question. But anyhow, yeah, you're. You know, and they, they want us to do another episode, so we will do another episode at some point in the near future. But, you know, I don't know. What do I look like, a forensic expert here? Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, my answer to this is that what if I stepped in a pool of blood right now here in my office, then I walked outside and walked down the street? Well, the first couple of footprints would be, you know, bloody footprints. But the further I went down the street, the further I went, the lighter they'd get, and at some point they'd be latent. So... You know, I don't know when 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 the investigating officer Brad Payne didn't get there until uh, Brett Payne, excuse me, didn't get there till 12 hours after the time the PCA says the crimes occurred. Those are latent, I think. I don't know. And um, another thing that I'm thinking too that could be considered a latent footprint, how we talk about like the bloody footprint. If you have blood which has certain chemicals on your foot, it makes me think of kind of like a black light where if you you can clean the surface of something, but if you look at it under a different lens, you're going to see it differently. So maybe it might not be visible to the naked eye, but like you said, it's just like it wears away. It could be other aspects to it. Oh, great. That's it. That's the only and question. That's the only oh, comment. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> okay, so I'll read this one from, I can't even, GG Joe Hal. You are right. Check. House was very loud because when they demolished it, there is not a single piece of insulation to make it soundproof at all. I'll have to go back and look at the uh, tape because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I didn't notice that, but I believe you. I mean, it went down awful quick. Did you notice that that backhoe went and the whole thing just really crumbled? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't much to that house. And it's uh, funny how Gigi says there's like, oh, no insulation to make it soundproof. We don't know, how, obviously, how much insulation was in the house, but we've talked about a little bit how you could hear things going on in other parts of the house. So I thought that was an interesting one. All right. So Keith, just Keith, <laughs> says, yes, what C. Scott Green, what is, what was C. Scott Green doing here? The house isn't even on the campus. Was he drumming up publicity for his book? Was he anticipating this crime going to translate into millions and millions of dollars coming to university? Rather suspicious, wouldn't you say? It is, in my opinion, that further investigation into his activities that evening could should be conducted. Which, interesting statement. Um, I mean, we've talked about it before. I think the whole book and talking about it is a little bit weird. We talked about in the past how the university did end up getting millions a million dollars in crisis aid uh, but it's hard to say one way or the other obviously all these comments are just speculations you know we're just reading what people are saying but 
Well, yeah, a lot of people say that the reason he was so involved was because, you know, the university is the town, the town is the university, and without the university, the town's going to, you know, go into the hopper. And so, you know, uh, Scott Green, you know, obviously had a financial interest in, you know, keeping things going and making sure they got their man and whether he had any influence on pushing them to identify the suspect they arrested or not, you know, it remains to be seen. It's just, I don't know if any ethical rules were broken. I don't know if any lines were legally broken, but it's just unseemly. That's all. It's very unseemly. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I'm happy. I apologize, guys. A little bit of issues doing control today. I tried out a new format, and the new format does not want to cooperate with me. There we go. All right. Did you want to read what Grandma has to say? Okay. I also feel that there is a ton of information and or evidence that we don't know about. If I had to adamantly argue guilt or innocence at this point, I could make a case for both with the information I've seen so far, I still have a problem with the idea that there was only blood in the bedrooms and not trailed in or out of the house. Well, you do have to remember that all we have is the little bit of limited information that they unveiled uh, with the um, probable cause affidavit. And so obviously, I know there are people that disagree with me, but they're wrong because there's a lot more evidence. If you've ever you know, watched uh, or followed legal cases like this all the way you know, from the time the crime occurred through discovery, through pretrial up to the trial, there's a lot more. There's a lot more evidence. And, and whether that evidence is really the smoking gun that some people say that William Thompson has or not, I would be comfortable arguing for Mr. Kohlberger's not guilty at this time, based on what we know, based on what we've seen, based on the facts that have been um, unveiled. I am very comfortable uh, if we wanted to argue, assign somebody to argue for his innocence, I would do it because I don't think there's enough there. But I mean, my mind is open and I know that as a matter of fact, there's a lot more evidence than what we've seen. And you can tell it's extremely divisive too. And one of the reasons that we love running this podcast is because as we talk about more and more evidence, almost you'll see it in almost every one of our comment section where people are saying he's guilty, he's guilty, he's guilty, he's innocent, he's innocent, he's innocent. Uh, everyone's entitled to a presumption of innocence until proven guilty. But grandma, you have a great point here where it's like, you could go either way. I think uh, we obviously we don't have a lot of the evidence, but that's what makes this such uh, interesting topic to talk about because you see people completely so split when there's not really anything leading to one way or the other. Yeah, the danger uh, that the um, prosecution uh, faces now that it's been way more than a year is that, you know, people have had a chance to pick apart literally every sentence of the probable cause affidavit. The issue with the car, the issue with the word stalking, uh, the issue with the uh, DNA on the knife sheath. I mean, how in this creation can there be you know, one teeny, teeny, teeny little bit of uh, DNA on the snap button on the sheath, but nowhere else. I mean, all these different issues, you know, have, there's been time to just really look behind the curtain, so to speak, and, and unveil it all. So, you know, and as time goes on, that's going to happen more and more. But that's just by two cents. Do you want me to read the next one? or? Yeah, but I do want to add, I mean, we talk about, like, it has to be uh, beyond doubt when if someone's convicted. And like you said, such a small amount of evidence, DNA, connecting him does not sound very good. All right, you can read Susan's comment. Susan, great episode. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> Your check is in the mail. Great episode. I agree. As a juror, I'd want to hear the sounds within the house. For Scott Green, he was interested in raising money over 800000 in behalf of a memory garden. Yeah, I, I think we've beaten the Scott Green horse to death. Um, <laughs> I really do. And, uh, yeah, the sounds in the house. People, I can't believe it, but people really are divided on that. This, there are people, there's another comment somewhere. I don't know if it's in this queue, but somebody like, said, you know, the law of the state of Idaho, according to William Thompson, says you can't go in the site. No, that's just not true. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here it is. Yeah. Here it I is. guess we'll just go and tell that. I like no. I so, like how you brought that one up. I'm like, we're on the same wavelength. Yeah, look at this. Thompson <laughs> stated that due to Idaho state law, they could not allow a jury to go through that house due to it being substantially changed. Rubbish. Why did they substantially change it then? And you know, I'm gonna argue that that's their fault. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, they probably tore up the walls and they probably tore up the floors, you know, looking for blood, you know, looking for DNA, looking for drugs, uh, looking for everything. But, you know, there's no reason why it couldn't have been put back. But there's no Idaho state law. Uh, and, and Thompson can't say that it's due to Idaho state law that a jury could not be allowed through because people, juries go through... Um, crime scenes all the time uh, and uh, there is no Idaho state law against going through a crime scene. There are evidentiary arguments uh, to be made, you know, a reasonable similarity, substantial similarity. You know, there are, there are legal evidentiary issues that are raised, but there's no Idaho state law. Nah, I'm sorry. Thanks for viewing and thanks for commenting <laughs> and thanks for letting us encourage you to think about this correctly. I wanted to make a joke that because this person's dividing Thompson and that their name is Tom, I was going to make a joke that it's Thompson's account, but we're still trying to cover up a forensic frenzy not being FBI, so yeah. I can't even joke about things like that because, you know, we love you guys. Don't take, like, we'll tease and stuff, but don't take anything and run. Forensic is not FBI. Tom Van is, yeah. I have no reason to believe it's actually Thompson. It's a joke. We're teasing. <laughs> All right. So we have Randy Hansen question. How many car identification witness expert witnesses will Ann bring in to prove that the FBI expert correctly identified a 2011, 2013 white Elantra? Don't tell me that video is too grainy to identify the car. The FBI expert already did. And that is something that I'm curious to see if they really try to go into, if they really try to pursue that route, because the pictures, I mean, they were blurry. I'm not a cars expert. All cars look the same to me. So, well, plus the other thing is, and uh, I don't know, a dozen episodes ago, we stacked a 2011 uh, Elantra against a 2015 Elantra, and to my eye, as a layman, they're so similar. Sure, the tail light is a slight amount different, and all, and they are blurry images. They're very blurry images. But you know, if the guy is being paid out of our tax-paying dollars. And that's his only job. That is his only job. He doesn't sweep the floors at the Pentagon. He doesn't, you know, do the taxes for the president. His only job is as a car expert. So, yeah, he should really have known his cars. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, and another thing that I think about, too, uh, is maybe the photos are too grainy, but I don't know the extent of skills that the car expert would necessarily have, but I'm curious how many experts they have in like image restoration that are able to kind of resolve some of those issues of what we can and can't see and what, you know, it should be group effort to figure out the type of car it was. So. Well, this takes me, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but <laughs> this takes me all the way back to high school. And there were guys in my homeroom in high school that just knew every single detail about a car. And had they gone on to pursue that, I mean, yeah, they could tell the difference between one tail light and another tail light. They could tell the difference between, you know, one type of tire and another type of a tire. They could tell the difference between one hubcap and and they these little teeny tiny things do change. And I know a lot of people think we attorneys are nitpickers because, you know, we can talk about the difference between one law and then a shade of a different law. And people say, oh, you're a nitpicker. You're... But if somebody's paid, you know, six figures and that's their job, I go all the way back to high school and say one of those kids in my homeroom probably could have done that if he'd stuck with that as a career. So, you know, either be an expert and earn your six figures or don't be an expert. You hear that, Car Bros? We have a future for you. Yeah. All right. This one is a little bit longer. Usually I try to pick the short ones, but I gave a little extra love to some of these comments, you guys. I was actually, I will say, I was telling Andrew off camera, I really appreciated the comments on this video. I mean, you guys always give us such great comments, but on the Making Sense video with Tommy, I noticed that you guys had some really 
thought out comments and I appreciated that. I have a question. Do you think this is the guy's real name on his birth certificate? No <laughs> shit, Sherlock? <laughs> I mean, you never know. They might also include the 67 on it. <laughs> First name, know. no shit, last name, Sherlock. <laughs> There's like middle name Sherlock and then last name 67. <laughs> Uh, regarding the demo, I don't think people realize just how small the house actually was and how close in proximity the bedrooms were to each other. If you look at certain photos, the house looks large until you see photos of the house with the cars parked in front. And then you can see the house is only the width of the four cars. The house was also paper thin, which also revealed the video footage of the dent, which was also revealed in the video footage of just, I can't even speak today. Anyway, the surviving roommates must have heard anything. And That's a good yeah. point. That's a really good point because, you know, I mean... I I don't know how many times I've seen something in a photograph or a film or a movie or whatever, and then you go and see it and it looks totally different. You really need to see the thing itself to get the perspective. And, and that's true. It was a pretty small house. I mean, you can park four cars directly in front of it and that's it. Um, so that's a really good point. And, you know, the jury now will not be able to do that. And I don't care about, you know, LIDAR and all the rest. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. that was wrong to destroy the thing. And there had to be a reason for it. And I agree with you too, where, I mean, I think no, Mr. No, no sugar Sherlock um, would have, has a good point where we see the house and we think it's a big house, but you also got to think these are college kids. I mean, I don't know how well off their families are necessarily, but you can assume that they're not renting a super expensive place that, yeah, you can have four rooms, but I've definitely seen, especially in this area, you can have three bedrooms and the bedrooms are <laughs> little yeah. tiny cave dens. Right. And we talked about, I think in a previous video too, that the one of the doors had a hard time opening because these rooms were a little smushed, right? Right, very yeah. small. Yeah. Exactly. All <clears> right. <throat> and now our uh, last comment talking about <laughs> the sounds with the house and how the demolition was loud. We got Roger saying it's loud from the tunnels oh, good because good. we always love our <laughs> tunnel conversation. There are no tunnels. There are, there no, are tunnels. no tunnels. Or maybe maybe there are tunnels. Maybe there's horses in the tunnels. There are no tunnels. I don't know. How do we know that there's no tunnels? Uh, okay. Because uh, my secret source told me. We, ha we have the insider information. But thank you guys for all of your amazing comments on the Tommy video. Let us know if you appreciate these shorter videos where we kind of go more in depth on the comments on, on one video. Uh, you guys always have such awesome stuff to say and they get to the point where I'm trying to find comments and it's hard to pick it out because we're trying to keep things a little bit tighter and not go on and beat a dead horse that may or may not be found in the tunnels. But I would love to hear what you guys think. Andrew, is there anything you have to say to the good people at home? Well, yeah, you know, it's good to get the comments. Uh, we do get some good comments. And, you know, it's just this case has so many quandaries about it. And the, the mystery deepens. It doesn't It doesn't get any better. Uh, and uh, with that uh, hearing that occurred on April 10th, uh, there were a lot of uh, comments about how William Thompson had said that uh, there was no stalking. And I think I'm going to do an episode on that because did he really say that or was he taunting the expert into admitting something that was taken out of context? So, you know, there were a lot of comments about how, um, well, there was no stalking. And so, you know, I really think that uh, the prosecutor left the door wide open for interpretation on that. So I appreciate the comments that we got on that, but that's really the only other thought I have today. Yeah, I thank you guys so much. Please continue leaving insightful comments on our video, like, comment, subscribe, and you never know, maybe your comments will be in the video. Andrew, do you want to do your classic warning to the good people to be polite oh well yeah you know and i stole this from another creator uh and she always you know she opens up her um podcast actually by saying be punk be kind be polite whether it's the gas station or the grocery store you don't know what the other person is going through so always be kind and be polite but you know the same thing goes for our 
comments. Uh, we love to um, see your comments. I've actually gotten some good ideas from some of the comments and done some research and de developed them into, you know, one of our red flags. Uh, so we really do like that. You don't have to agree with us. That's that's fine. But the only couple of rules are, you know, don't be belligerent. You know, how can you be an attorney for 30 years if you think and then they fill in the blank or, you know, you can't really slander people. You know, we've had people say, well, I think so-and-so is a such and such. And, you know, that's totally intolerable. And yes, we do use the old delete button. So that's, that's my spiel. I should probably just record it so we can just say Add it, it into the thing there. Yeah. No, I mean, I will say, I will say <clears throat> the truth. All things considered, he says that if you're rude, you will be kicked out but i will say you're pretty tolerant for what people say they have to like you said they have to be pretty belligerent so don't be scared to disagree with us because just because you're disagreeing doesn't mean you're insulting us it doesn't mean andrew will uh you know delete your comments so thank you guys so much and we look forward to seeing you in the next one you have been watching about the law a production of the law offices of Andrew D. Myers in Methuen in the Merrimack Valley of Massachusetts and in Derry, just outside of Manchester, New Hampshire. Remember to click the like and subscribe buttons down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to share it with your friends and others. If you'd like to talk to me about an injury case, a car accident, a slip and fall, a serious bodily injury case, or some other case, please feel free to contact me. I'd love to talk to you. You can contact us through my website at attorney-myers.com. We have a contact us block, or you can call on one of the telephone numbers we've given there, or you can email me at andrew at attorney myers Dot com. The foregoing is offered for informational purposes only. It is not intended as and does not constitute legal advice. Laws vary widely from state to state. You should rely only on the advice given to you during a personal consultation by a local attorney thoroughly familiar with state laws and the area of practice in which your concern lies. This podcast must be and hereby is labeled advertisement in some jurisdictions. I'm angry. That's that. And that's that. And that's that. And another another episode, another episode done. Please go ahead and be as angry as you like. And we're going to have an episode covering why the house was so loud that it destroyed the tunnels underneath. Well, I don't know about that, but there was no, there was, there, you know, you, you know why there wasn't any insulation? The horses ate it all. <laughs> oh, now the insulation got knocked down into the tunnels, so now the horses will have to go through the tunnels to eat the remains. <laughs> Do you think it's do you think it's a, a a coincidence that the president who wrote a book about this you know resolving the institution's uh, solvency his last name is Green? Maybe he's green. Maybe he's related to the horses. He's eating the green pastures. It's not easy being green. I'm angry. Please go ahead and be as angry as you like.